In the depths of history, a tale unfolds shrouded in mystery and ancient manuscripts. Journey back to the 9th century as we trace the origins of Mary Magdalene's enigmatic story. Rabanus Maurus, the Fulda abbot and Maine's bishop, penned the words that would ignite a saga of epic proportions. Join us as we sail across treacherous seas, accompanied by Mary Magdalene and Saint Martha, venturing from Asia to Gaul, where the Rhone meets the sea. Uncover the secrets hidden within these age-old texts as we unveil the remarkable tale of Mary Magdalene's past. The Golden Legend, Mary Magdalene's Royal Lineage Revealed the origin of Mary's history in France can be traced back to the 9th century Fulda abbot and Maine's bishop Rabanus Maurus. He wrote several books and essays, including one that was presented to Pope Gregory IV. This essay chronicled the tale of Saint Maximin, a disciple of Jesus who traveled with Mary Magdalene and Saint Martha on a ship with other Christian leaders. They sailed from Asia, past Italy to the right, and eventually landed in the province of Vienne, which was governed by the Gauls and where the Rhone meets the sea. Similar versions of this story can be found in the Sermo de Sancta Maria Magdalene manuscript, the Sermon by Saint Odo of Cluny, the Vita Apostolico Eremitica from the 11th century, and the Otia Imperialia from the 12th century by the electorate Gervais of Tilbury. Evidence suggests that the story of Saint Mary of Egypt may have been created to obscure some of the more controversial aspects of Mary Magdalene's life. The numerous accounts of Mary Magdalene stemmed from her own life, as she had Egyptian roots. Some scholars believe that many stories about Mary Magdalene were inspired by the life of Saint Mary of Egypt a 4th century figure whose story was recorded in the 7th century by the Greek Orthodox bishop Sophronius. Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany untangling the connection. The manuscripts indicate that the legends of Mary Magdalene in province have been around for a long time. However, they don't provide much information about her life and history except that she is identified as the same person as Mary of Bethany, who was Martha's sister. Moving forward a few centuries, we come across the Golden Legend, a medieval text created in the mid-13th century that provides more detailed information. According to the Golden Legend, Mary and Lazarus come from a rich and influential royal family which supports the idea that Jesus also came from a similar background. Mary Magdalene had her surname of Magdalo, a castle, and was born of right noble lineage and parents, which were descended of the lineage of kings. And her father was named Cyrus, and her mother, Eucharist. She with her brother Lazarus and her sister Martha possessed the castles of Magdalo and Bethany, and also a great part of Jerusalem. All these things they shared among them, such that Mary had the castle Magdalo, and Lazarus had part of the city of Jerusalem, and Martha had her part Bethany. According to the golden legend, Mary Magdalene was believed to be a royal princess who owned a castle in Judea. Interestingly, her father's name was Cyrus, which means far-sighted, young, or son in Persian, and has historical significance as it was associated with renowned Persian kings, notably Cyrus the Great, who founded the Achaemenid Empire and was known for his wisdom and leadership. The Anointing of Jesus, Mary Magdalene's Forbidden Act as per the golden legend, it is believed that Mary of Bethany and Mary Magdalene are one and the same. The depiction of Mary Magdalene in the text is as follows. This Mary Magdalene is she that washed the feet of our Lord and dried them with the hair of her head. 
and anointed them with precious ointment, and did solemn penance in the time of grace, and was the first that shows the best part, which was at the feet of our Lord, and heard his preaching. The Gospel of John determines that Mary of Bethany, sister to Martha and Lazarus, as the woman who anointed Jesus with oils. The Golden Legend, on the other hand, suggests that Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany were one and the same person. This anointing was a crucial ceremony, often used to consecrate and enthrone a new king of Judeo-Syria. It was traditional to hold this ceremony at Temple Mount. So, then what could have caused the family to have a private ceremony with a select few relations and dignitaries? Nevertheless, Mary Magdalene performed the anointing with her hair in a curiously intimate ceremony, a practice not permitted for ordinary Jewish women. Women were barred from the inner courts at the temple, where any sacred rituals would have taken place. This ritual was doubly taboo in Jewish terms. However, Mary and Jesus hailed from an Egypto-Persian background and were not Orthodox Jews. The Nazarene treated women's hair as sacred and elevated their position in their church, similar to what Samson did in the Old Testament. Anointing the new king of Judea with sacred oils and hair was undoubtedly a double Nazarene honor for the new king, Jesus. As the shadows of history fade, one thing remains clear. Mary Magdalene's story, woven through ancient texts and legends, transcends time, leaving us captivated by her enduring mystique. Though her past may be veiled in uncertainty, her impact on history and the hearts of millions continues to resonate, forever etched in the annals of human consciousness. Join us again as we delve deeper into the enigmatic life of Mary Magdalene, unearthing new revelations and untangling the web of legends that surround her. So stay tuned for more captivating episodes that will unravel the secrets of this remarkable figure. Be sure to leave a comment and let us know what you think. Until next time.